So, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about probably one of the funnest photo shoots that I've ever been part of. Um, it was really fun mainly because it was my idea, I planned it, I executed it. Um, there were obstacles that got in the way. Um, we decided to just go for it and it paid off in a really, really big way. The photo shoot was out at the Bonneville Salt Flats in just out towards Wendover, Utah. I wanted to try to get a photo of a snowboarder in the air with a pool of water so that I could catch their reflection in the pool of water. And just like, if you've never been out to the Bonneville Salt Flats or seen anything about it, um, they filmed Pirates of the Caribbean 3 out there. It's the scene where they're in Davy Jones' locker and the Black Pearl is like stuck on the sand and the crabs skim along and they like move it off into the actual water. Uh, that scene was filmed at the Salt Flats. You can just imagine, like, if you've never been there or seen it, it's just this huge expanse of just salt, crystallized salt. Like if you brought a scraper out there, you could like scrape the ground and make yourself a little, a little shaker and bring it home. Don't recommend that. It's probably full of like dirt and other nasty stuff, but you get the idea. Um, so just this totally alien landscape. And I thought it would be awesome to just contrast something that like snowboarding where like you usually do it on snow which is white but then to take it onto just a completely flat surface try to create something that no one's ever seen before that no one's ever done before out at the salt flats other photographers have done something similar where like uh so red bull loom is a competition is a photo competition for action sports and adventure style photography um there's a photographer who did really well and placed really high by taking the photo of they built a BMX jump. It was like a quarter pipe and they had a BMX rider ride up this quarter pipe and do a couple tricks. And that photo did really well in that competition. Um, I hadn't seen and still haven't seen anybody who did something like that with a sport that just has no place being out there um, on top of a reflection. And then while we were out there, we had this crazy idea and we ended up throwing a curveball that I think paid off really, really cool. So anyway, like started off, I designed the ramp, I built it myself. I got a 50 gallon drum of water loaded in the back of my dad's truck and started from his house as like a base camp because he lives out that way. Um, drove everything out and set up this jump on the salt flats. Um, got a couple of my snowboarder friends who were young and reckless enough to try this with me. And we set up the jump and we tested it out. First guy on the ramp was a kid named Dax. He was just like, bless his heart. He's one of the most stoked kids I've ever met. Um, he tried it just to see if we could get some kind of go with it. We had tied a rope behind my other buddy Noah's Volkswagen Jetta um, tied the rope to like like the booster seat anchor point like in the back seat of the car which is in no way designed for towing stuff but that's what we did we set it up that way um, I had bought some like linoleum flooring because I thought maybe that would have or less friction than just like going straight from the salt onto the wood jam it definitely worked for the ramp part I'm not sure that it had any less friction than the salt but Regardless, anyway, Dax stepped up first. He tested the linoleum, gave it a thumbs up, and then it was just like, it was time to test the ramp and see how the ramp did. Um, I was only brave enough to test the ramp the one time. I took off at it, got up in the air a tiny bit, and then just came down and landed flat on my hip. Um, massive bruise, and that was, I wasn't going to be able to be the athlete in the photo anyway. I needed to be behind the camera, but I still wanted to try it, you know? And I think it's really cool in this kind of a world where the photographer can at least show that they have some kind of a grasp on what the athlete is doing. One of my favorite photographers is a guy named Jimmy Chin. Jimmy Chin tells a story about working with a climber named Dean Potter, um, who's not with us anymore. Um, but Dean really, really expected a lot out of the photographers and he wanted to see that the photographer was willing to go through it just as much as Dean was to get the photo. And so 
Jimmy puts a lot of emphasis on that part of the relationship and how he feels that his ability to live up to an athlete's expectations helps push the athlete and help them feel more comfortable and deliver much better photo shoots that way. Um, so, so yeah, I jumped on, I tried the jump. Um, and then it was time to put the fun away and start getting serious. Like Dax and Noah took turns getting dragged around behind the Volkswagen to just test out and get comfortable with the towing and the balance of it all. And then eventually it came down to, it's time to take a couple practice jumps. Um, once they felt comfortable enough with that, we unplugged the, the gallon of water or the 50 gallon drum of water from the back of the truck and we made our own puddle. That was one of the concerns going into it was, is where we going to be able to find a spot where we could get some standing water to even capture any kind of a reflection. And then the flip side of that, is there gonna to be too much water? Or like, is, are we just gonna get stuck out there in just like salty, muddy mess? Stars aligned, we were able to pull it off, went into it with the full anticipation of, you know, we may just end up having a little barbecue and turn it around and go at home. This could just be like a scouting mission, but we wanted to be prepared to execute and pull it off if we had the opportunity. Everything was set up. I pre-framed the camera, set the focus where I wanted it to be, had the aperture and everything set up ready to go in manual mode because when you shoot in aperture priority or shutter priority, the camera doesn't fire as quickly as it does when it's in manual because it doesn't have to take the time to think, okay, what's the exposure for this next frame? And it doesn't have to try to adjust itself. If it's set in manual, it can just go and you can burst fire at the highest possible rate that your camera has available to it. So got everything set up, camera's on a tripod, literally just had to keep one eye on the car and on, I think Noah went first, just wait for them to go by, wait for them to get in frame and then hit the burst fire and I mean, it's really hard to miss when you're able to use the burst fire on it, right? So, so yeah, no one went first. Then we had Dax and was really, really excited with what I was seeing in the camera. Couldn't wait to get it out, get it in post. Um, and then as we were kind of wrapping up, we still had some sunlight left just a little bit because we timed it just right to be with golden hour. And then as the sun went down, the sky started turning this kind of purple color. And I was like, okay, do we just do the same thing again with a little bit of sunlight? Or do we pull out a can of gasoline and light some gasoline on fire in front of the jump, just use some of that, uh, some of that compression to give that illusion that they're jumping over the fire so we could do it safely um, we weren't equipped to safely have them jump over actual fire, so we used an optical trick. But yeah, we lit some stuff on fire, and then the sky was purple, Dax's jacket was purple, so it ended up just, it ended up popping. And it's probably one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. That being said, there's a couple things that I would like, like to do differently next time I do it. I don't know if you noticed, I definitely noticed, but you can't really see their head in any of the photos because the position they're in and the amount of like, they're not totally balanced as they're going off the jump. And so they're compensating for that by leaning forward and the head is hidden from view. You can't see, you can't see them at all. For that reason, mark quality of the photo down in my book. Um, the other thing I would love to do differently, this was about a week before I really got into using flash for my action shots. And so next time I go back, I would love to set up, call it a light trap, where you've got lights set up on either side and you can just trap the subject in between the lights. And I think that would make the photo much more dynamic. If I do it that way, I can adjust my shutter speed and my aperture so that I can catch, I don't have to use as much ISO. So I can use the shutter speed and the aperture to catch the sunset at the right exposure 
and then I can dial in the power on the flashes so that I'm lighting up the subject with the direct exposure. But yeah, that's on the to-do list. Those are a couple things that I would love to do next time I get the opportunity to take some people out and recreate that shoot and just do something better. Who knows? Maybe you'll see me in the next Red Bull Balloon. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time.